uh, he came and visited, and and he said, he said, hey, I have a question for you. I said, yeah. He said, I have a picture that I took in Ireland that I think is of a UFO. He said, if I would bring it in, would you want to display it? So I said, oh, sure, absolutely. You know, because even if I look at it and I can tell it's a bird, you know, it's interesting. Right. So uh, so he, he brings it in along with a picture of himself, like, to display beside of it. So there's, like, this reference of, you know, who who took him, where it came from. And, um, you know, in the, get, in the picture, uh, the, the object that he's saying is UFOs is very blurry. I mean, as far as motion blur, it's moving. The camera's not moving. Um, but, you know, it's it's kind of impossible to tell what it is or anything like that. It certainly to me doesn't look doctored. Um, but depending on what it is, I don't know. But that's the only thing that I'm aware of because it, it seems like if, maybe if there were any more, I think they might just be like sporadic and from a distant sightings and ones that maybe people might not be so willing to, to talk about because maybe there's such little about them that's concrete because mm-hmm. um, they're just this flash. But as far as these kinds of stories where it's so up close and, you know, personal and 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 scary, um, I don't know of anything else. Um, you know, that's not to say it doesn't exist because, you know, Audra Harper sat on this story for what has to be, you know, 60 years, you know, before anybody outside of her family and close friends knew anything about it. So it's hard to tell. Um, you know, give us a couple decades. We might be able to tell you about some more crazy things. Well, you had just mentioned you know, the dark sky yep. aspect of your area. Mm-hmm. I will vouch for that. When I was driving through trying to get to a, a location to investigate, I was really shocked by how dark it was. Mm-hmm. And for a very long time on the interstate it was just you know me and a truck <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yep yeah. yeah. that's the way it feels and what's funny is and that's what you're talking about there is a fairly developed place yes um you know you go you go off the you know the interstate you know several miles and go back up into a hollow you know away from a bunch of dust to dawn lights and you'll be amazed at the amount of sky you can see. You know, I've I've grown up in West Virginia. I've lived in West Virginia my whole life. Um, but when I get the chance to truly get into these secluded places where it's really dark, and I get a chance to look at the sky, I mean, it's almost enough to make you fear for falling into the for falling into space. It's it feels so empty and vast that nothing's holding you down. I mean, being able to see the Milky Way in all of its glory. You just with your naked eyes is a really amazing experience. And if people haven't experienced that, you need to come to West Virginia and find you a piece of dark sky and, and take it in because it's, it's a sight to behold. It's, you know, one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen, you know, in my whole existence. It'll take your breath, won't it? Mm-hmm. I am, I am always sky watching. I'm a hammock sitter. So okay. I have, but I live in a uh, metro area, so uh, I have to go and like knock on my neighbor's door and ask them to turn their back deck lights off when I want to watch a meteor shower or something. Right. So I really am so lucky when I do get to where I can see something besides white pollution. <laughs> I think yeah. that you're very blessed to be able to see that when you want to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and you know, there's a place that um, that's actually open to the public 24 hours a day in a very nearby county in Calhoun County. There's Calhoun County Park, um, and it's it's up on hilltops that have been cleared. So that way you get pretty much 180-degree view. That's a place that if somebody really wants to see the sky – that's the place they need to put on their bucket list because you, you're really not going to get any better than that. Well, then I am going to get with you after the show, and if you'll tell me the name of it again, I'm going to put that in chat. Would you please? Yeah, uh, Calhoun County Park. It's near a little town called Grantsville, West Virginia. 
All righty. And, and it, it's the closest place that I know of to here where you get a lot of sky that's completely publicly accessible Well, and a lot of darkness. It is in chat. If anybody is listening who's not actively in chat right now, it's right there for you if you didn't drop the note down. And Thank we you. are up on a break. This will be about three minutes. And this will be Hot Ride by Purple Planet Music. And again, we have appreciated them so much. We are about to be going to pretty much full ads. So enjoy it while we have it. And they have been fantastic to us. We'll be back in three minutes. Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. And just like that, we're back. This is Fate Mag Radio. I am Kat Hobson, your host, with my guest, Andrew Smith. Andrew is pretty much an expert on the Flatwoods Monster. He is very involved in his community, and he is part of the Flatwoods Monster Museum. And, Andrew, we were talking during the break about how amazed I am at just what a great job y'all have done of getting this information out because it's been some time since there was actually an experience. Then you had Audrey with her new information that came out and kind of gave new life, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's, there's actually basically a whole industry in your area and I, not to put it in such a crass way, because it's kind of a celebration of that experience. Right. But, yeah. but there really is like a cottage industry surrounding the Flatwoods Monster there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll tell you, um, you know, if, if 
if I could say that we were just so smart that, you know, we we came up with this and decided to, you know, push it in such a way or market it in such a way just, you know, to make sure that, you know, we cornered this market, I would be lying um, because that's not how it happened at all. Really, everything was fairly accidental um, and kind of grew like by itself. Um, you know, the Flatwoods Monster and the stories related to it, you know, had this, had had their own untapped momentum that was just setting waiting for somebody to acknowledge them. I mean, really, uh, and particularly somebody here, you know, in our area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, like, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm the executive director of the Braxton County Convention and Visitors Bureau, and um, I've been with the organization for six years, um, and we've only had the Flatwoods Monster Museum since October before last. So, you know, not very long in the grand scheme of things. You know, but something that I noticed that came up a lot when we were at our old location is occasionally I would get visitors from pretty far away um, that weren't necessarily making the trip just because of the Flatwoods Monster, but say they're traveling, you know, from here to there and figure out that if they reroute their trip, you know, adding 40 minutes to their trip, they can stop by, you know, this place that they've only read, you know, articles about, you know, Flatwoods, West Virginia. Yes. Um, so they would. So, like, they'd come into my office and, and tell me about it. And it was almost like we had to be beat over the head with it before we realized <laughs> yes. people love this story and they're thirsty for it. They're thirsty for information. They're they're thirsty for a gathering point, um, which is actually I kind of feel like one of the, the biggest thing that's came from us, you know, moving and being able to expand our our exhibits that we have that have that pertain to the Flatwoods Monster to such a degree that we really have a bona fide museum. Um, but it's almost like people just want the gathering point. You know, people just want the place that they can stop that's in the general area where these stories took place that they've, you know, read on, you know, these you know, websites and, you know, books and comics and, you know, just to be able to stop and, and see where somebody – you know, took the time to make a collection for them to come and visit. Um, so it, it's, it's like I said, you know, people had to beat us over the head with it before we started doing things with it. And really, the first thing that we did that was really Flatwoods Monster-centric was in late 2015 and then going into 2016, we designed and built um, five different Flatwoods Monster chairs. Um, and these are like for lack of a better phrase, like a very glorified bench. I have to interrupt are, you. Yeah. Aren't you who built all of those chairs? I didn't build them. Um, you painted but I them, helped though, the, right? Yes, I did paint them. Um, I, I helped to design them with the um, contractor that was actually going to build them for us. You know, I had an idea in my head what I wanted them to be, and he helped me to translate that into something you could actually build. Um, so, so um a local carpenter named um, Alan Johnson actually built them for us. And then once we placed them, um, I painted each one of them. Um, I have an art background. Uh, so any time I can convince, you know, my organization to let me do something art-related, I, I take the opportunity. So, um, so you know, we built four or we built five of these chairs um, spaced out over time and sort of placed them all around Braxton County. And every time that we placed them, you know, we I would give them a, you know, they needed a paint job anyway to protect the wood, mm -hmm. but give them a paint job that either reflected where they were being set or just kind of a unique personality based off of all, you know, the other ones. So each one is a little bit different. So, you know, our hope there is that people will, you know, drive around exploring our whole county while visiting each of our, you know, monster chairs, seeing that they're all a little bit different. And they're very beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank so, you. I really appreciate that. Well, I thought it's actually a trail. It's the Flatwoods Monster Chair Trail, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and say that, you know, two times fast. <laughs> but, but I yeah, do this uh, and I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could, but I'm not going to try. Yeah. So. But uh, but yeah, there's there's a and actually um, we actually have a you know a thing a campaign going that's actually been going for about a year where.